In this video, I'm going to show you how I implement web push notification for my PWA application. And on the left side right here, this is application that run on Chrome. And on the right side right here, this application run on the iOS device. And right now, when I click on approve this one, so as you can see right now, it's going to push the notifications to my phone. And when I click on the notification, it's open up the application. So it feel like a native application and with the notification as well. And right now, for example, inside this phone right here, and if I going to click on approve, for example, so there's going to be a push notification on the Chrome device right here as well. So this is a really great uh, for if you wanted to implement the notification, for example, chat application. And so right now, let's see how I do it. To implement a web push notification, it's really easy. So the first step that you need to do, you need to have the service worker. So the service worker is running on the background and it's run on the different thread from your application. So it is not going to relate it to your application. So that's why we can do these things on the background, such as push notification and things like that. So what you need to do is you need to register the service worker inside your applications. And after you, you register it, you can use it to generate the subscription endpoint that looks something like this. And so this is going to be a little bit different from the browser, the example that I show you here. So this is the example that I run on the Chrome. And if you run it on the Firefox or Safari, so this one is going to be a little bit different. So when you generate this endpoint right here, you can save this one inside your users table that belong to them. And later on, you can use this one to push uh, with this payload and the message, and it's going to push the notification to the browser where it's going to, where it's subscribed to. So um, in order to do this one, we're going to use the web push uh, package right here. And so that's how we do it. So based on this diagram, okay? So right now, let's take a look on how I implement this one inside the code. So this is my Next.js application. And so first I want to convert this application into the PWA. So what I did, I'm using the next package called next PWA. And so I just wrap this one right here. So you can see really easy. So I just point to the destination into the public folder and I do register it true. But actually when I do register is true right here, it actually not register. And I'm not sure why it's maybe it's due to the app router because I test this one on the page router. It's actually registered. So to confirm that if your application is registered with service worker or not, you can go into the application. So for example, this one, and you can go to the applications and go to service worker. And as you can see, we have the value right here. So if you do not see any, any something like this, so it's mean that the service worker is not registered. So for me, in order to register the service worker, I need to create the custom component called PWA right here. Because since the library is not generated uh, register for me, I need to do this one. So I just do navigator, service worker, register, then this one right here, as you can see. So the file that you can see like sw.js right here. So this, this is the file. So this file is generated for you by the package of uh, the next PWA right here. So this is when happen when you run npm run build or npm run dev, or you can disable it when on the development mode as well. So this is like a generate for you and you can use this to register. All right, so once the, I confirm that my application is registered with the uh, service worker, I create the component called the notification request. So inside this notification request, I have two components uh, for this one. So I have bell ring and bell off. And so the bell off right here, so it means when a user click on it, it means the user want to have notification. And if the user click on bell ring, it means that the user want to remove the notifications. So for the bell off, so when the user click on it, we're gonna show notification. And if you look at the function right here, so what it does is going to ask the user the permission that we want to push notification to the browser are you going to allow it or not so and it looks something like this for for example i click on this one and as you can see we have the allow or block so right now when we click on allow and the status is going to be granted and it's going to call this function the subscribe user right here okay so for example if the user click block and uh, the user do not want it to push notification. So if the user do that, 
we cannot generate or subscribe the user. So basically we're going to toss them to something else. And if they want to re-enable, if they, let's say if they click block and if they want to enable it back, so they have to manually enable it by themselves. So they have to go, for example, here and toggle the notification on if you are using the PWA, they have to go on their phones and to check the notification of the application and re-enable it by their own because I think we do not have the, like the function to reset the permission request on the browser uh, with the with the code. So the user need to do that on their own. So um, that's what they need to if they block and they want to re-enable the notification. Hopefully it's not confusing. So after they click on that, so we call the subscribe user. Let's go ahead and the uh, function subscribe user right here. So inside the subscribe user right here, so first I need to make sure that my service worker is registered. So I get the register service worker. And if it's registered already, so I'm calling another function to subscribe the endpoint. And if they haven't subscribed yet, so I'm just doing another subscribe right here again. And we call the subscribes endpoint right here. Okay. And if we look at the generate subscribe endpoint, it needs the service worker as a parameter. And so what it needs, what it does right here. So first, uh, it just do the push notification and it subscribe a manager and then subscribe with the option and the option right here, it needs the application server key and the user visibility true. So the user visibility true right here. So this is just the mandatory in Chrome, probably Firefox is optional. So we, we just need to put this true. So it's going to be good for all, uh, both of uh, all of browser. And for the application secret key right here, or we call it like the vapid key right here. So this is needed for the browser and the server to communicate and authenticate. So we need to know that, okay, uh, so since this is generate the endpoint, right? So we need to give them a key and the key is later on, they can use it to validate uh, whether this is like, you know, authenticate or not. So if you want to generate this key, you can use this package web push right here. And the web push right here has the command to generate right here. And so right now, if for example, this is what it looks like when you run this one, it's going to give you the public key and the private key. And so the pub public key right here, you can save it into your local ENV and save this one into your uh, local ENV as well. So, but this is public, so it's fine to expose it, but make sure that this one do not expose your private key. All right. So when you have this one, and then uh, when we generate the subscription right here, we, it's look it's going to look something like what I show you this one. And so what I use is just use it to save to the, the table. I call it in the notification table and I save it there. So it's right now it's belong to the user who requesting it and it's save it there. And that if they have an error, toss error, it's not just refresh or refresh the user information again. And so that's what I did. It's really easy. And if you're curious about this function right here, so this function, it just convert uh, the uh, base64 to this one. And so it's really easy. Uh, it's really uh, easy right here. And so basically I just copy and paste as well. I'm just going to show you where uh, the source that I copy paste later on. Okay, great. So right now we know how to generate the subscription endpoint right here. We save it to the user's table as well. It's all good to go. And right now let's see how I use it. So in order to push the notification, I create another function. It is a server action, which is going to run on the server. And you can use this one on the uh, create an API endpoint to do it as well. But I think for create an API endpoint, you need to protect the API endpoint as well, which I think create a server action is going to be easy uh, since, you know, Next.js be able to do it. So I'm just using it. So inside here, I just get the Vapid key. So create an object of it, public and a private key. And we just use web push package, which is this one. And so for that, we need to get a Vapid detail, which is the emails and the public and the private. So this is, you can just uh, copy, use the same as one. You could just fake email. It's fine as well, right here. And just make sure the public key and the private key here is the same that you use when you use to generate the subscription right here, okay? And so when you have this one, so basically uh, all you, all I need to do next is to fetch the endpoint of the user that I want to push to. So right here, I fetch from the notification from the user uh, and then I pass their user param right here. So I fetch this one 
And if we have an error, I just respond with an error. And if I have the data, and then I can push the notification. So what if we do, we just web push, send notification. And since I saved before the endpoint as the string of JSON, so I need to pass it again. So I get this one and then I pass this one. And this is the message that I wanted to send to the user. So inside this message, I sent with the message icon and the body, I stringify it. So right now it's become like a string and I push this one, okay? So this is uh, how I push the notification. And yeah, so right now, how do the service worker send a notification? So if you look at the service worker, I create the service worker file, which is the custom file right here. This is like the worker in .js. So the SWS right here is also service worker, but it's like the auto generate for you when you run build or in development mode. But if you want to have a custom service worker, you need to create a folder called worker and create index.js and it's going to generate, it's going to look something like this. Okay. If we can save, so you can see this is the same as we see here. Great. So right now inside this one, we just responsible for two events. So the first event is when we push the notification. So when, whenever we call this push, so it's going to trigger this push event right here. And we're going to get the data that, uh, from the, the function, right? So this function is, is sending text of JSON, which is have the message icon and a body, right? And inside here, after we receive it, we can pass it again and destructure. We have the message, the body and the icon. And so we can just show notification. So with the message, show with the body and the icon right here. So it's really easy. So you can see. And another event is just notification click. And so when the user click on this one, it just click on the notification that pop up. It's going to reopen it or open the uh, your application. And this is really easy. So I just copy and paste uh, this code right here. All right, great. So that's pretty much it on how I implement. So right now, let's see where I use this send notification right here. So we can search this one. I call this one whenever the new quest is a complete. So when the user, let's say, uh, when the user click on or when the user complete the quest or create a new quest or approve a quest, I just call this function right here. And you can see I create a handle push notifications. And then this is in the uh, client component, I guess. Yeah. And when it's on click, it's called the handle push notification. So that's pretty much it. So right now with this function, you can call whatever you want, whenever you want, it's up to you, uh, based on your applications. And so, yeah, that's how you implement it. So it's really easy to uh, do this one. And yeah, you can take a look at the code. Uh, I, I put the link to the source code of this project as well. And yeah, let me know in the comments, what do you think? And I really enjoy, like, you know, working with PWA and things like that. The applications right now are about this application. It's, I, I need um, a couple more feature. It's not working really well. I just do the notification. It's fun to learn and build it. So that's why I wanted to show the, to you guys how I implement it. And yeah, uh, and for the resource of it, uh, I, you can take a look at this uh, blog post right here. This is what I get the inspiration from it to, since 2018, but it still works. Uh, and also, by the way, off on the iOS, you need to have the version 16.4 uh, plus in order to uh, notification to work on your iOS device. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So for the older iOS device, it's not working. For the latest, it's going to work. So make sure you double check on your iOS device as well if you it's not working for you. Um, and yeah, I think that's all uh, that I wanted to share in this video. Hopefully you learned something and hopefully you like this uh, video. And all right, see you in the next video.